number of um, options that they have presented to us and that we wanted to make available to our clients that fit in succinctly with their server strategies, their hosting um, strategies, and their, of course, their LaserFish system. Uh, my name is Morgan Wheeler, and you might know me as the account manager and one of the solutions designers at Cities Digital. But uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the uh, man of the hour um, today. And uh, Craig, if you'd like to inter introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your wonderful solutions. I'm sure the audience would love to hear about him. Great. Thanks, Morgan. I appreciate the intro. Uh, my name is Craig Pollock. As Morgan said, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, FPA Technology Services. We are basically an outsourced IT service provider to small to mid-sized businesses. Um, we focus primarily with uh, investment advisors. Um, we've been working, uh, we've actually been in business since 1991, so we've been doing this for quite a while, working in the investment field since before then. Um, back when when Advent was, uh, Axis was the professional portfolio, DOS version. Um, State Street, um, Schwab, Centerpiece, Bloomberg, First Call, Research Track, Internet, uh, you know, you name it, we've kind of worked on it. Um, and obviously, Laserfish and, and Cities Digital has been a great partner with us. Um, my background is in business systems development, uh, specifically application development. And while uh, running FPA, I also basically act as an outsourced CIO or CTO for a select group of clients. Um, and this is where, uh, you know, we kind of hit home. So, you know, we partner with Cities Digital on the Laserfish side, on the paperless office side of things for many of our clients. Um, but primarily we manage the and, and maintain and direct the infrastructure for our clients. So whether that's on-premise or hosted or hybrid uh, cloud, it, it, you kind of name it, but we, we basically act as the IT service provider, um, and it runs the gamut for some of the things that we do. Um, to give you a little background about us, um, like I said, we've been in business over 21 years. Um, we have uh, approximately 25 full-time employees. Everybody's a full-time staff for us, um, fully certified and accredited, uh, Microsoft certified, VM, Cisco, Citrix. Uh, you name it, we, we got those logos. Um, every, like I said, everybody who works for us is a dedicated um, full-time employee. Nobody who touches any of our clients' systems is outsourced. Um, we don't outsource to third parties. We do everything ourselves. Um, we have uh, a dedicated network operations center. Um, this is what it looks like, you know, for guys who are running our networks, running our clients' networks, running uh, help desk, providing end user support. Um, and, you know, what we like to say is, is one of our uh, slogans is business before technology. It's all about the business. Um, for us, it's not about technology. It's not about, you know, bleeding edge as much as it is leading edge. Um, it, it's all about what the solution is that makes sense for our clients. And, uh, you know, our core value, we have five different core values, but our, our main core value is take care of the client. It's all about our client, and, and the other tagline that we throw out there is uh, we focus on your IT so you can focus on your business. That, you know, I think that says in a nutshell, we take away the worry. We remove the worry and, and let you focus on your business. And I think that that's uh, kind of a good segue into what we're talking about today in terms of this uh, backup and disaster recovery solution, and what we call our BDR solution. Um, and I'll, I'll just go into that real quickly, but before then, um, some of the clients that we work with, you know, it runs the gamut, but like I said, primarily, probably 60-75% of our clients are investment advisors. Um, so let's dive in. Um, you know, I know your time is valuable. We started a little bit, a little bit late this morning, but we'll make sure that we get you out of here by noon, the latest. I'm sorry, 11 our time, the latest. Um, so let's dive in. Um, we start off at just the highest level, the basics. What will you learn today? Well, the goal today 
is to talk about the difference between backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity. Those terms get thrown around a lot, but there really is a difference between all three. Um, what are some of the disasters? What, what they're likely to happening? The severity? Um, why you should be afraid? And, and um, you know, we like to throw that out there because it's always good to put things into perspective. Um, oftentimes, we hear uh, from clients or from prospects, "Oh, that won't happen to me." Oh, that's you know that we we have that covered, or you know we have insurance for that, or you know our tape drive. You know, we've never had a problem in the past, so you know, that means we're never going to have something in the future. Um, but, but really, none of that has any bearing. It's like flipping a coin a hundred times. You know, on the 99th time or the 100th time, it doesn't matter what you flipped in the last, it's still 50-50. So just because something hasn't happened doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's not going to happen in the future. Um, and, and the thing is, is we manage a decent number of sites, and so we see this stuff. We see it over and over and over again with people who are prepared and come out of it unscathed and not a problem, and other people who aren't, and it's a major crisis, business interruption, and, and in, in some instances have, have not only brought businesses completely to their needs, but um, have even, you know, close to putting them out of business. So, um, you know, those are things that we take really seriously here. Um, the other thing we'll talk about is the easiest way to ensure your data is fully protected, um, how to make sure your backups on autopilot, and then how to make sure that uh, you're fully operational after any disaster. Because that's, that's the most important thing is, and that goes back to business continuity, is keeping your business running. So what, is, you know, what, what does it look like out there? Well, you know, we've all heard the statistics, um, but like I mentioned, of companies who experience a major loss of data, 25 to 43 percent never reopen. So if your server goes down or you lose all your information and you don't have a way to get that back, you know, odds are one in four or two in four that you will not be able to keep running. Um, on top of that, 51% close their businesses within two years of the loss, and a mere 6% survived over the long term. These are all numbers that came from the SBA. Now, obviously, you know, living in different parts of the country, you have different sorts of uh, risk factors and different sorts of uh, disasters that can happen. You know, anything from, you know, if you think about recent things that have happened in the last few years, you have Sandy on the East Coast. We've got floods going on in the Midwest. Um, out, out here in L.A., Knockwood hasn't been a little while, but we have earthquakes. Um, you know, Katrina hit. Um, fires, floods, there's lots of different things that can happen that can significantly impact things. And when you least expect it, that's when you need it most. So um, what, what's the goal of all of this? And, and I think not necessarily just the goal of, of this webinar, but hopefully the goal of what your takeaways are today, um, putting yourselves in a position where you ensure that you never lose any critical data, you ultimately minimize your downtime. And that third, you enable yourselves to recover as quickly as possible in the event of a disaster. And, and again, all of these things are, are easily controllable. And, um, but there's a big difference between what, what we're going to talk about and what our solution is and kind of the standard sort of tape backup, which is kind of very, very legacy technology these days. So let's start at the top. And what's the difference between backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity? Um, but before I start there, what I'd like to start off with is to take a quick little poll. Is to ask you a question and, and see where your, your minds are at right now. Um, so the first one that I'm going to ask and throw up there is with which, here we go, um, which best describes your understanding of your current backup situation? You know for a fact everything is backed up and, and your stores work. Uh, I'm pretty sure everything is backed up, but I don't know for sure. My IT guy says everything is backed up, so it must be. And lastly, I'm unsure as the state of my backups and I worry. 
So those are kind of the four uh, options that we have here. So let's give it a, another, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, let everybody answer. Um, this is usually where I play the music from Jeopardy. Need something to fill it in. Um, let's just give it another 30 seconds, let's say. Okay, so uh, five more seconds for you, those of you who are multitasking and have something open on another screen. If you can come back to us right now, I'd appreciate it. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna close it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. So here are the results of what we have so far. 40% um, you, you know everything is being backed up and restores work. 40% you're pretty sure. 20% say your IT guy knows. <laughs> and, and nobody says they're unsure, which is really interesting. Because um, I, I always find that interesting that nobody's unsure, yet everybody's participating and wanting to learn more about the solution. and learn more about disaster recovery and business continuity. So there is some unsuredness, but um, you know, maybe people aren't aren't are afraid to admit it. So anyway, um, let's keep going. Um, and as I was saying, I was going to talk about the difference between backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity. So to start off with, backup is basically just copying critical data to a safe and reliable and secure medium for recovery. You know, backup is the first layer. Second layer layer is disaster recovery. So what does that look like? The processes, policies, procedures of restoring operations. So it's more than just your data. It's restoring your operations when it hits the fan. And then lastly, the third phase is business continuity. And so to us, that means it's a holistic management process that identifies potential impacts that could threaten your business and provides a framework for building the capabilities for an effective response. So backup is the first layer, disaster recovery is the second layer, and business continuity is the overarching goal. What you need to do so that you're prepared to continue your business operations during or after a major disaster. So when you think about it, whereas backup and disaster recovery are actually tactics, business continuity is really more of a strategy. So let, let's talk a little bit about um, our risks here and understanding your risks. Now obviously keep in mind there are different kinds of disasters and different things that impact your business's normal operations. But if you look at the probability and you look at the severity, i.e. the impact, they're kind of inversely proportional. So your risk to human errors, your risk to equipment failures, third-party failures, environmental hazards, fires, disasters, terrorism, obviously it goes down, uh, the, the probability goes down, but the impact is, again, inversely proportional to that. Um, so, you know, the thing is, is you got to think about these things and, and what the likelihood is and what the cost is to restore from something like this. Um, So, um, you know, if you, if you remember, uh, for those of you on the West Coast, you know, the Northridge earthquake here, while it was a while back, obviously, 94, um, it was pretty significant. And it stopped businesses in their tracks to the extent that you couldn't even get back to your office to do work. So if your business, you know, if your building is closed and locked down and you can't get into it, how are you going to continue to run? And that that's a pretty big uh, issue these days and, and, and pretty solvable too in, in very cost effective ways where 94 you know, was not cost effective at all. 
So, um, so that that's one thing. Stupid little things that you think about in terms of like human errors, uh, or maybe third party failures. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, um, the the network administrator for the city of San Francisco locked down their network and took the password. Um, and they couldn't unlock their network. They couldn't get to anything. They couldn't manage it. They couldn't run things. And literally, he was in jail uh, on a contempt charge because he wouldn't release that information until uh, you know the mayor, then Gavin Newsom, went in and, and talked him, you know, literally off the ledge to get the information back. Um, but you know, you think about that if if that's a human error or that's a human risk, and that is a pretty high level of probability. While that impact may seem small. Completely, completely brings you to a stop and to a screeching halt. So, um, you know, we really like to think about things in terms of what can happen and the cost of being prepared should it happen, and then evaluate it based on these two items, based on the probability and the risk. So, once that's kind of laid out, the next thought process is looking at things really in, in these two concepts: your RTO and your RPO, your recovery time objectives your recovery point objective. So meaning, recovery time is how long can your business survive before you have to be operational to remain in business? And how long before the costs of being down outweigh the costs of recovery? Whereas RPO is your recovery point. So meaning, if you do tape backups and you back up and take it off site once a month and and that's okay for you because you think, well, if it's in a major catastrophe, I can deal with that. Well, the reality is, is if that hits and you're down and you lose a month's worth of data, it doesn't mean that you can start business up, business as usual, that next day when you, you're able to get back to your systems and things come back up. It means you lose a, a month's worth of business. And from an investment advisory perspective, not, not only is that not compliant, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I don't know of any investment advisors that we support that could withstand losing a month's worth of information. Just couldn't happen. So even even though you think the risk is low, it's still there if that's the way that you're running your business continuity and, and your disaster recovery approach. So so we can talk, you know, even further from these sorts of things in terms of redundancy and real-time failover, which ultimately becomes very expensive. Um, but these are concepts that usually only come into play for larger organizations or ones with specific downtime limitations, like, you know, if you run ATMs or you do ATM monitoring or you have trading systems or you have healthcare um, concerns and, and things have to be, you know, uptime is, is you know, there is no uptime. Uh, or lack of uptime. There is no downtime that you could possibly have. Um, so before continuing on, I, I'd like to throw one other question out to you guys um, and get your feedback on this. So, so this is um, how long could your business operate without access to your computer system? Um, Multiple days, no problem. Two days max, no longer than a day, no longer than an hour, or we can't have any interruption to our systems at all. So um, you guys can answer that. This will give me a sense of, you know, again, this comes back to the RTO and the RPO. How long can you be down and how old can your data be? Okay, getting some good answers. Okay, another five seconds. We'll wrap it up. All right, so I think we got most everybody in. 
I'm going to close the poll right now and share it with you guys so you can see what everybody's thinking out there. Um, so right now, you know, 40% two days, 40% no longer than one day, and 20% we can't have any interruptions. Pretty interesting. Um, so uh, multiple days, not an option. Um, you know, I think that oftentimes what we've seen is people who say they can't have any, any interruption. Uh, when you start talking about failover and what that realistically costs, they tend to move down into the, well, one hour would be okay sort of solution. So let's revisit this real quickly and come back to these key concepts. So here we go. Uh, again, backup, possess recovery are more tactics, while business continuity is um, more of a strategic. So let's talk about um, you know, traditional backup methodology and how most people historically have been doing backups. Um, and I'll tell you, probably 95, I don't know, 93% of our clients somewhere in that range, are, are no longer doing backups this way. So we've, we've since migrated them off of that onto a, uh, the solution that we'll be talking about. Um, but just to give it you, you, you some perspective of how everybody used to be doing backups and perhaps how many of you are doing backups. But backup is performed nightly. Someone must remove last night's media and replace it with tonight's pay. It relies on your staff to make sure backup is working. You have no many idea, you know, no idea how many times uh, we get an alert saying, "Oh, waiting for a case the next morning," and last night's backup didn't happen. You know, I'd be curious to know how many how many times that happens for you guys, where, oh, didn't get a backup last night because we forgot to change change the tape. Um, it's a single snapshot of the whole day. Um, Offsite backup is usually a two-step process and rarely current. Like I said, sometimes it's you take it off-site at the end of the month or you take it off-site once a week. Um, oftentimes, backup is usually only the data and not everything to do the complete restore. Your server crashes, you lose your Active Directory, you lose all your security information, all the permissions. Everything has to be reset up. Um, you know, and, that, and that kind of feeds into restores can't be performed quickly and can't be performed to different hardware. So. The, the concept of traditional backup, you know, is just really, really messy. I mean, it was great. It was cost effective. It worked in its time. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, you know, backup is really slow. Again, you know, as the data sets have grown to where they're at now when you're talking about, you know, hundreds of gigabytes, terabytes even, you can't do that overnight in a tape backup. And that, and that creates other problems. Uh, media degrades over time, tapes have a high failure rate, um, tape drives are slow, um, costly, capacity is costly, um, formats are proprietary, you know, once you move up from 40 gig to 80 gig to 120 gig to 240 gig, all of that, you have to throw away all your old hardware and tapes and start over again. Um, so the thing that, that people don't really kind of put into perspective when, when we talk about tapes and tape backup and, you know, hey, it was old technology or current technology for some people who are using it. Um, you know, I should have this as a poll question, but how many people out there use VHS to watch movies? Right? So, you know, the reality is, is the technology has leapfrogged over the, this sort of technology that's out there. I mean. Nobody, I, I, would, I would wager, there's nobody watching this webinar, um, rarely anybody out there in general, unless it's, you know, an old wedding video or, you know, birth of your child or something that's only on video, um, you're not watching movies on video. So how can you possibly rely on keeping your business functional and rely, you know, as an insurance policy that all your data is on, on tape, something that is that, that old? So, so here's the problem that we run into all the time. Um, we think a good backup is good enough. And we think that a backup is good enough. 
And more often than not, a good backup is neither. It's neither good nor a backup. It's usually, like I said, data only, pieces of the data. It's not going to be what you need to have to get you up and running. So let's kind of put all this in perspective. So what's a criteria for a solid backup system? Well, first off, take the human element out of the equation. Second, make sure all files are backed up. Everything needs to be backed up. And when I say everything, that's in all caps, underlined, bold, in red. Everything should be backed up. Um, it's fully automated, easy to do. You don't have to even think about it. It just happens. It's proven, tested, and secure. It includes intraday backups, meaning there are backup snapshots within the day, so you're not just waiting till the end of the day. Um, and you know, while that's happening, there's there's still no impact to day-to-day -day operations. It doesn't do anything that prevents you from working. Um, restores are fast. You're able to restore it to dissimilar hardware. Server crashes. You need to go buy a new server and get another one up and going. You don't have to worry about buying the exact same server to get everything up and running. Um, and it's being performed automatically off-site. And off-site is a huge, huge word. I don't have it underlined, bold, red. I should. It's with, with today's technology, with internet speeds, um, with the cost, there, there, there's no reason that businesses shouldn't have a local backup and an off-site backup at the same time. Mirrored. It's the same thing, just off-site as well as on-site. So, what does the off-site backup look like? Well, of course it needs to be secure, and especially for investment advisors, it has to be compliant, it has to be encrypted, it has to be secure. Um, it has to be secure um, in both in the transfer of the data as well as the storage of the data. Um, you have to have the ability to receive the data whenever you want. Um, obviously, it needs to be geographically separate from you. So if you're in New York and you got hit by Sandy, you want to have a data center that's out west. If you're out west and you want to have, you know, be protected from an earthquake or fires like we have out here, then you want to have a data center that's across the country from you and in different locations. Obviously, it needs to be low cost and it needs to be compliant across, you know, all the different compliance and regulatory agencies that manage this stuff. So, Given all of this background, I know I'm throwing a whole lot of information out at you guys at the same time. I'm trying to give you the, paint the picture as, as detailed as possible, but also as comprehensively as possible um, to provide you the background information so that you can answer some of these questions that I think are really important as business owner or the key decision maker. You know, how much revenue, gross and net, do you generate? What's it worth to you to lose that? Um, how many employees do you have and what's their cost? So if a network goes down, if your server goes down, if you can't access it for a day or two, what is that costing you? What does that runtime cost? So that, that's a lot of money to be losing, not only the business and the access and the information and your ability to perform your business, but the actual cost of your employees adds into that business continuity cost. Um, and so how much of this is facilitated or even dependent on your IT infrastructure? And how will a failure, even a short lived failure, be perceived by your customers and your employees? And, and I have to tell you that, you know, investment advisors, just like us, we're, we're trusted advisors to our clients. And so being able to run, being able to be in business, being able to answer those questions when they call and not say, well, the system's down, I'll have to call you back tomorrow really goes to the trust level. And, and it's all about trust for us and for our investment advisor clients. It's about trust. It's about our competency. It's about how we're perceived by our clients. So part of the issue and part of the question to answer, ask yourself is how would you perceive, be perceived both to your clients and your employees? Um, so last two questions quickly are how quickly can you recover lost files? And if a server fails, how long would it be before you're back up and running? So there's the opportunity cost that this represents. So the all-important question is, you know, with what you have, and, and I assume 
there's, there's a reason that a majority of you have even signed up for this webinar is that you're questioning, you know, is there something better? What are we doing? How does it fit in as compared to what's out there right now? Um, so before moving on, one last poll question. So this really helps me understand what's going on and gives us a good sense of, of where you guys are at. Um, I swear this is the last, last poll question. Um, so here we go. Uh, which best describes your current business continuity solution? So now that we have a little better understanding of business continuity, um, which best describes your situation? Server images are stored in the cloud. Um, we'd be down for an hour. Uh, backups taken offsite daily, we'd be down for days. Um, we don't have a meaningful business continuity approach, we'd be scrambling. Okay, we got a couple more coming in. Um, again, some of you that are multitasking, if you can alt tab and come back to this screen uh, and, and answer the question, we'll uh, close this up in, in 30 seconds. Okay, so we almost have everybody voted. Um, I was just going to give another five seconds if we can get maybe somebody walked away from their desk. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to close it up now, or we're close enough, um, and let you guys see what this looks like. So half the people watching right now uh, I have server images stored in the cloud, um, a quarter backups will be taken off-site, and a quarter don't have a meaningful business continuity approach. So I appreciate the honesty on the last one. Um, obviously, that's kind of why we're here and, and talking through this. So at this point, I, I'd, I'd like to unveil or, or talk about, unveil is kind of you know, a little overblown, but um, our solution. What, what does that look like? So. FTA's backup and disaster recovery solution. Basically, our solution addresses all three aspects of the situation. It does local backup, it's mirrored in the cloud, and it does server virtualization. So what does that mean? Well, it addresses all three areas that we've been talking about. It addresses backup, it addresses business continuity, it addresses disaster recovery. So backup, complete, automated, no human intervention, it's all local. Um, business continuity, off-site, the backup is mirrored in the cloud, so everything that's being backed up locally is being backed up in the cloud. And the third thing, disaster recovery, and also business continuity, is server virtualization. What that means is, is through virtualization technology, we're able to spin up a server. If your server crashes, we have an image on this device. We can remote in. We can spin up the server within a half an hour to an hour. You're back up and running as though nothing ever happened. Pretty cool technology. So let's let's drill down a little bit more and, and, and talk about, you know, to try to explain and give you the details of really how this all works. Um, you know, there are there are kind of at, at, I don't want to say I'm jaded, but I've seen so much technology these days and you know, I'm doing this for so long that there aren't many things that I get excited about. Um, but this is this is one of those things that I get really excited about um, because I've seen it in action. I've seen it work. Um, we use it here, you know. As we like to say, you know, we eat our own dog food. Um, you know, we're not the shoemaker who has, you know, doesn't have a pair of shoes. We we use this 
entirely to back up our system. And you know, we've come through for clients multiple times. Uh, we have case studies about it. You know, it's it, it's one of those things that I, I can't even communicate how um, how much of a great solution this is. So um, let's talk about it a little bit. So local backups. So when you're making a copy, so what we have is we have a device. It, it depends on the size of your installation and what you have, what it looks like. It might look like a little server box. It might look like a little workstation up to it could have a blade server with, you know, 12 different hard drives in it and all sorts of redundancy and whatnot. So depending on your size installation and what you need, um, the device looks different. But the capabilities are all the same. It does exactly the same thing, just scaled for different size installations. So for those of you who have, you know, obviously this is, this is for on-premise servers. Um, we can put it in the cloud if you have a hybrid or a private cloud solution. We can do that as well. Um, we even have it working in some cases doing a reverse backup from the cloud down locally. So it, it's a pretty flexible solution. Um, but let's go through some of the capabilities that it has here. So there's near real-time backups. We uh, it, it can be set to be doing backups every 15 minutes. Um, we have it set. Our, our standard that we run is backing up once an hour. Um, it backs up complete server images. So we take a server image, and then everything that's being done after that is a backup at the bit level. So for instance, if you make a change to a Word or Excel file, and let's say this, the Excel file is you know, a megabyte big, it's a huge file, or you know, three megabytes big, and it's all complex, and this, that, and the other thing, and you go in and you change the date on the footer, it's not going to back up the whole file. It already has all the file. All it's going to back up is what was changed on the disk, which will, might be a couple of bytes. So that's how it's able to do this in such a fast way, and in such a streamlined way, in such an efficient way, so that the overhead is, is really minimized. At the same time, it's intelligent enough that it, it's tracking all of this and keeping track of all the changes, and it, it puts all of this together itself. So there's no human interaction needed. We don't have to do incremental restores or anything like that. It's all automated. Um, and we monitor it and verify it 24 hours, seven days a week. So you know, we make sure that these backups are running. We make sure that the backups are restorable. Uh, we make sure that everything is is you know uh, functioning correctly, so that's the local backup. Then the offsite redundancy, everything that we're talking about gets mirrored into the cloud. So you literally have server images in the cloud. Anything happens, we could remote in, run your network off of the cloud. Uh, anything happens within 24 part of the part of the service here, within 24 to 48 hours, we have a new box sent to our client site that has all the server images preloaded on it from that's been backed up to the cloud. You have that now locally. And so now you can you can boot those up and run those locally and have that up and running. Um, so they're secure, they're compliant, um, they're SAS 70 data centers, um, they're redundant sites. There's one on the East Coast and one on the rest, West Coast that are being mirrored. Um, so the off-site redundancy is is rock solid. And then, like I said, the third thing that we have is the, is the virtualization capabilities. So literally, if any one of these servers goes down, if any one of these servers goes down, um, we can literally take that image, spin it up on the device, have you up and running, and Nothing needs to be done on your workstations. It's, it's the same exact server name, same exact IP address. Nothing needs to be done. Um, and and the cool thing, and this is you know a, a, that kind of boggles the mind to some degree, is backups keep continuing to run. So even though you're running your images on this backup device, it still does backups of itself. So even though your server went down and you're running on this device and you're adding new data to this device as though it's a server image, backups continue to, re to run. Um, and like I said, a replacement appliance is delivered within 24 to 48 hours if something happens to that local, local device. 
So, um, like I said, there aren't that many things that, that, that get me really, really excited about this. Get excited about technology, and, and this is one of those things. Again, because we've seen it in practice, and we've seen it run. Um, we have those horror stories of servers crashing and being able to get clients up and going within a half an hour. Um, and we can talk a little about some of those case studies. So one of the things that I, I, I kind of glossed over or maybe mentioned, but I, I think is really, really important for you guys to hear and to know is that in all of this, in the event of a complete catastrophe, you can run your business from the cloud. So this service comes with 30 days per year of cloud access included. So we can remote into the cloud, boot up your servers, give you an IP address, and with a terminal server, um, you guys can access your environment, your servers, your data, everything that's been backed up. Um, and this is included in the system. So this ensures the complete under an uninterrupted continuity of your business. Um, this is, you know, this is one of those MasterCard commercials. This is priceless. Um, it, it really is. And the fact that you have 30 days of cloud access included means that you can run your business. If you have an earthquake and you can't get into your building, if Sandy hits and you can't get into your building, if something happens and you can't get into your building, we can give you the information, you remote in. You know, as long as you have an internet connection from anywhere, you can remote into your servers and get your information up and running. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty incredible solution. And, and this is why, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing that it, it, it kind of sells itself in a way. Um, so as I mentioned, we have a couple of success stories. Um, this is an investment advisor um, who uh, literally um, a pipe broke in uh, or near their server room and flooded their server room. Um, we were able, through our managed services, we were monitoring it. We knew it had happened. We called them. It happened after hours. We got somebody in there. Um, we were able to bring up all their servers except for their main trading database. So they couldn't place trades the next morning. Um, we were able to remote in to their uh, EDR device, get the, get the back, last good backup, which happened you know, before the pipe burst. Um, Spin up that server, get them up and going, and you know they're 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 one one of their quotes to us is that they're just to say they're thrilled with how the BDR solution came through is an understatement. Um, this happened at a time when we were first working with them, um, developing the relationship, and they were still working on some of their old legacy servers, and there was a question: Should we implement the BDR now? Should we wait until we do our new servers? Our recommendation was, no, don't wait. Do this now. Get it on your existing servers. And lo and behold, something hit, pipe burst. You know, business comes to a screeching halt. We were able to, to keep them up and running. Um, this is, is an example of uh, they are a business management firm and a CPA firm. Um, they manage, uh, you know, uh, they have pretty high profile net worth individuals. Um, and what happened was they have they have about thirty five users uh, on their their system. They in right in the middle of tax season, their file server crashed. Um, we were able to boot them up, get them on the you know remote in, get them up and running on their BDR um, because the server was virtualized. Um, and literally thirty five users was running were running on that for two weeks. Until we got their replacement server in and got them back up and going. So it wasn't a crisis. It didn't stop their business from running. Within an hour, they were up and running again. Um, and they didn't have to run out. You know, we didn't have to run out to Fry's or CDW or buy some server that we had to buy. We were able to plan, get, get good pricing, get them in there. Um, it wasn't a crisis. It wasn't a rush. And keep them up and going during that whole interim process. Um, same thing happened here with a uh, this is a real street real estate investment trust company. Um, same sort of thing. They have about 50 users. Their exchange server crashed. Uh, got them up and running within 45 minutes. Kept them up and running until we can get the server replaced. Again, just three samples of 
um, you know, wins of when it really, really came in, in, in you know, I don't, I don't even want to say in handy, um, came through for them. Um, you know, does it happen a lot? No. Um, you know, the reality is, is I think over the last three or four years of doing this, and, you know, probably upwards of 70 or 80, maybe 90 of these solutions out in place, um, I think we have seven or eight examples of that. So maybe that 8% um, in terms of, I don't want to say failure rate, because it's not the failure rate of the unit, it's the failure rate of their existing servers and whatnot. Um, but it does happen. And there's no question that, that these businesses swear by that. So, so again, the question is, how does this impact you and can you survive? And ultimately, you know, for you guys as business owners and decision makers, um, the question is, you know, what's the bottom line? What 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 does this cost? And so, here's a general idea of what it runs. And again, this is a service that we offer. Um, it's an all-inclusive service. So again, for uh, 500 gigs of, of data, um, the monthly fee is. 385 with an install fee of $650. Um, same thing with uh, you know up to three servers for a terabyte of data. It's 485 and 750, and you can you can read the, the prices, the cost there. Um, so the thing to think about is when you're when you're sizing these, um, we usually ask for or plan for about a two to one or two and a half to one ratio, meaning uh, if you have 500 gigs of data, you'd actually want to be using the S1000. So because you need to have room for growth, you need to have room for spinning up those virtual servers, and the ballpark's about two, two and a half times what you currently have. So what we are offering today is for those of you who are, who are um, attendees, we are offering a special through the end of the year um, of basically um, providing this at 50% off our install fee. So the install fee means we take snapshots of all your servers, um, we get everything installed, we deliver it, um, we take those snapshots, load it onto hard drives, send those hard drives to the data center, sync up the data that's on, the, on those hard drives to the data center, sync up what's happening on your local EDR, get everything in sync, manage it, get everything going, it's all-inclusive fee. If you need to restore files, yeah, send us an email, call us up, we can restore everything, get it back to get going for you. So all, all of that's all-inclusive. We monitor it 24-7, we manage it, anything happens, we're the guys who are making sure that it's running. Um, so this is kind of how this, this runs. So um, I'd like to throw it out there and say, you know, if you guys have any questions, if there's anything um, that you'd like to ask at this point, if you could raise a hand, that'd be great. We can talk it through. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I think this kind of wraps things up and gives you a, a perception of what it is that we're trying to provide here as a solution. Like I said, it's, it's worked out outstanding for our clients. Um, our clients swear by it. Um, you can see here the, the concept of what's different between traditional tape backup and what our BDR solution looks like. Um, and I think there you have it. So um, for more information, you can go check it out at our website slash BDR. Um, to check out how you guys are doing, um, go to our website slash BCRC to download our business continuity report card. Um, you can take that hand it off to your IT guy, have him double check everything and report back to you where you really stand in terms of your business continuity capabilities. Um, I think uh, unless there are any questions and anybody raising any hands out there. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think I think we can we can somebody's asking for a copy of the um, presentation. Um, we could certainly uh, send you a, a copy of it. Um, so from there, I think it'll be, uh, it might be downloadable from or accessible from our website. And we'll send you a link to that. Um, 
Any other questions at this time? I think I think we're good then. I think we we were able to bring it in just under uh, an hour. Uh, Morgan, are you still there with us? I am. Yes. I, thank you so much for your time, Craig. It was a very interesting presentation, and we. Um, we can't underscore how much uh, FPA is a trusted partner of ours and one that has uh, presented us, uh, Cities Digital, with a, a viable solution that we feel is a, at a trusted enough level to to uh, advertise and inform our client base about. Uh, we don't do that lightly. So thank you again for presenting to our uh, our, our trusted family of clients, Craig.